Sunday morning. I'm over here at the shop. Got some Casey Kasem, American Top 40 on the radio. And I got a little bit more work to do over here. I just wanted to give everybody the update because I know you're probably like, what's going on? It's been 10 days. Well, I have been working, but I have so much testing to do that it's really not nothing that I can show on video. I'll show you what I'm doing right now, but it's been two days solid of testing to make sure that everything works before I actually put it in the vehicle. I don't want to get in the vehicle and then have problems and then regret doing this. I want to make sure that it's all great. I plop it in, it's going to stay great. So if you want to see what I'm up to, let's go. All right, if you haven't been following my Instagram channel and the things that I've been posting, here's pretty much the rundown of what's been happening. All right, we got this over here. We got the new Mechman alternator in. It's actually working pretty good. The factory plug has to be popped out. And since I'm running an external regulator, which I shoved right over there, it's got its own field wire and everything else. So I will end up with a battery light until I can figure out how to shut that off. But the battery light is pretty tame in this truck. My instrument cluster is basically a TV screen. It's all one big screen. So when the battery light is on, it's not really like a big light bulb in front of my face going battery light. It's just like a little thing in the corner. You can't even really tell it's there. So I think I can probably deal with that until I figure out how to shut it off. Uh, if I have to deal with it until I make this thing stock again, well, then I guess I'll do that too. But anyhow, this is what else is going on. So I realized I'm probably going to have to have a 12 volt battery somewhere in here to support my starter and everything else because I don't want to pull the starter through the box. It can handle it, but it's not really good for it. You can tell that it's struggling a little bit through it. So we're going to leave a 12 volt battery in this spot. I'm actually going to get the Titan 8 4800, the stock size battery for this, but it's lithium and it's going to go in this spot. So I'm taking this out, putting the lithium in. And I'll have a 12 volt source. Everything else on that rack, there's five 14 volt batteries that charge at 16.xx. 16.2, 16.3 is what I'm probably going to be shooting for. So 12 volt battery that charges at 14 plus, 14 volt batteries that charge at 16 volt plus. And the step down box, unfortunately, I've got to move it somewhere else. And it's no problem, I don't mind. I got a couple good spots planned. In the past week, I've also done other testing. I ran a temperature sensor into the engine compartment and I stuck the probe right there in the corner where the air intake for that step down module would be. At about 70 degrees outside, sitting still for 15-20 minutes, it rose up to about 100 degrees in there. As soon as I took off, it went straight back down to 70 degrees and it was actually trying to go a little cooler than that. So I was a little bit surprised. But I do live in Sacramento, so it gets to be over 100 degrees in the summertime, 115 at times. So I'm not so sure I like that area for the heat. I'm pretty sure I could do something about it if I really wanted to push the issue I could probably cool it down in fact I even thought about water cooling it somehow and that sounds like a fun little project but I ain't got time for all that I just want this working so I'm gonna have a badass 12 volt lithium battery from excess power it's gonna match the ones in the back other than it's 12 volts and those are 14 volts and I'm gonna stash that box somewhere so as far as cooling is concerned this thing is a success it keeps itself nice and cool I'll show you what I was doing during testing but as long as I'm not adding any extra heat any crazy heat like the engine compartment and I do have twin turbos in here the pipes are ceramic coated so it's okay it's not gonna be as hot as it could be but it's still hot so I'm gonna move this either to the back underneath the vehicle or I got a big hollow spot up front and I'm leaning towards the front so what I did was I bypassed the positive wire that used to go to the 12 volt battery now it's going up over the fender and it's going to the back of the block on the drop down box. From there, I got another positive wire that's going to go to the back of the vehicle and that's going to charge the 14 volt batteries at 16.3 or so. So the truck is going to be set at 16.3. Right now, mimicking what's going to happen once it's in the vehicle. But after it goes through this block, if you watch my last video, you'll see how this works. It's going to come out of the top, which is right here, and then it's going to go back to the vehicle itself so now the truck thinks it's getting that alternator without the step down but it's stepped down of course I got other wires here too as well I got relays I got the external regulator it's completely rigged up when it's all working and I'm happy it's gonna be super nice but we're so rigged up right now it's crazy I got a positive wire right here this one right here is going through the relay and that's what's turning the regulator on that's coming down here that's going over to the positive of the 16 volt side Off to the amplifiers it is. So the truck's going to get 14 something. The amp rack's going to get it 16 something. Just like I planned. So let's fire this thing up. I'll show you guys what I'm working with. Then I'll take all this contraption apart. 
bring it over to the lift and run it all nice, including some sky high 4 aught cable from the back to the front, or I should say from the front to the back. So that 12 volt battery is staying up front and that's going to be real nice because when I go to turn the starter, it's not going to pull all the juice through that step down box. It's just going to pull it off the battery. And as soon front. as I cut the key off, I'm going to use this old school solenoid. It's 150 amps. It's basically a big fat relay. And I'm going to separate the 16 volt side from the 14 volt side. That way they're not interacting all night long on each other and the smaller side is pulling the bigger side down. They're just cut off. I'm going to turn the key on. As soon as I do that, this thing's going to get triggered and these two posts right here are going to engage and they're all going to play together nice and everything's going to be good and as soon as I'm done and I shut it off, they disengage and they're their own separate units. So it's sort of like a battery isolator. That's actually what it's doing. That's going to be coming up as I mount the step down box somewhere in the vehicle. You'll see that soon. So before I start it, just to kind of show you what's happening, we got... Fifteen point five on this side, and we got twelve point eight on this side. Truck's not running, obviously, so let's start it up. See what we got. So as you can see, that little battery light right there isn't that big of a deal. It's just kind of over there. I'm not really sweating that too much. So that's an older AGM XS Power D4800 that's in there right now. My idle voltage should be higher than that, around 13.8 to 14 or so. Uh, with everything on, with the vehicle using power and stuff, it's gonna be a little bit lower than what it was when it was just sitting there. But it's okay because the truck only needs about 13 volts to run and I don't care. The truck can have whatever it wants. As long as my system has the 16 volts that I want, then I'll be happy. And the reason I'm not pushing 17 volts to that thing like I really want to is because, well, I'm going to give you guys a little hint. This truck does not like anything higher than 15.7 volts. Want to know how I found out? I'll tell you. So I figured since I already had a battery light on and I'm bypassing the stock alternator wire, who cares? Let me put 16 volts on this thing and see what happens. And if it could take it, I'll just put another 14 volt battery underneath the hood, push 16 volts and be done with it without the step downs. Well, here was my findings. I'm not going to do it right this second because I have this where I want it. But as I turn this, the external regulator will allow me to crank it up as high as I want, almost to 19 volts. So I don't want that. But turning the truck up to 16 volts, it actually worked. I had 16 volts on the dash. I actually brought it up to 16.3, right where those amps are about to cut off. So I was really happy. I'm taking photos of it. I'm like, wow, I'm going to send this to everybody. Check this shit out. And, uh, well... I went to turn on my air conditioner and my fan and the other accessories so I could see what kind of amp draw I'm getting and uh, well, I didn't have any of that anymore. It all shut off. I was like, oh no, talk about shit in a biscuit. Well, I started to turn the voltage back down again and as soon as it hit 15.7-ish, everything came back on again. 15.8, it all cut off. 15.7, back on again. So the computer is like, nah, I ain't having it. So if anybody out there is a certified GM tech that knows so much about the electrical that they know how I can shut that light off and how I can make the air conditioner and all that work past 16 volts, let me know. I'll make some more changes later. But for right now, that's where I'm at. So my amps, they cut off at about 16.3, they go into protect, and uh, well, the truck cuts off at 15.7. Hey, you just found that out for me. All right, so I got this ready to go, the TM1, and we're monitoring this box. It's not monitoring yet because I unhooked it. So, all right, so we're running about 13.4. The box is on. Fan's already turning because I got it set for 80 degrees. So this thing's gonna start cooling down as soon as it starts seeing 80 degrees and slowly ramp itself down if it's not. If I wanna turn that voltage up a little bit, Okay, so now the vehicle itself is getting 14.2 volts. Over on that side, we got a respectable 16.5 over here. If you watch my previous videos, you'll see this bank a little bit better. But I'll show it to you a little bit. So there's five 
excess power Titan 8 S6 is back there. Batteries, they like it. The amplifiers, they go going to protect at about 16.3, so I have to back this down to about 16.2, which means that voltage has to come down, but it's okay. Somewhere in the 13s is more than enough for the vehicle, as long as I get this. And I'll have that knob inside the vehicle, so if I feel compelled to put 14.9 to the vehicle and 17 to the back battery bank without the amplifiers on so they won't go into protect, just give them a really good charge, I can do that. So I think we're gonna be good to go. Right now, got the truck running, the headlights are on, and there's the amperage it's pulling. Let's turn everything in the vehicle on and let this box warm itself up and cool itself down. So I'm gonna turn the AC on. Make sure all the fans are kicking up front. Okay, so the AC is on, you can hear it. Turn these heated seats on. All right, 64 amps. Let's turn the rear air on. Both defrosters are both on right now. All right, here we go. Woo, 103 amps. That's every single thing I could think of on. We're just gonna let this box do its thing. It reached 90, fans blowing hard. Should just stabilize itself. I'm just gonna leave all this stuff on. Matter of fact, I never use the rear defroster and I don't really know if it's gonna bubble up my tin or not, so I'm gonna turn that part off. There we go. Now I know this box can take it, but this would be the craziest scenario I probably would have this truck in, about 90 amps. It actually was about 96 amps when I had that battery hooked up when I was testing earlier. So that thing might be uh, on its way out. Plus batteries are a load anyways. But there we go, look at that. We're holding steady. In case you don't know, the TM1 is monitoring the temperature on the box and is slowly ramping the fan up as it gets hotter. So the hotter it gets, the more that fan turns. And I chose 80 degrees as my main mark. So right now it's pretty much, probably about 85%. I'll adjust that as time goes. But for me, I don't mind it being on. It'll be underneath the truck. I don't mind it kicking on as soon as the vehicle's running. As you can see, I turned the amplifiers on. They are class A slash AB. They use juice just being on. So they're doing a little bit of pulling over here as well. And right at 16.33, I know one of these amps will probably go into protect soon if I keep it up like that. So I'm gonna back this down to 16.2. Something like that should be good. They'll like it. And like I said, I could turn that knob and bring these batteries up to something a lot higher give them a really good charge when I need to but they're doing great at 16 volts anyways they won't need a lot more than that and we're just letting this thing do what it does 90 amps it's trying to reach 100 degrees That's it. I spent the last four or five days doing what I'm showing you right now doing all the testing I'm not so sure I gotta spend all day doing this and film every moment I just really want to let you guys know what I've been up to, what kind of testing I've been doing. 
this Escalade is doing great. Everything that I've been doing, I let this thing run for like five hours. I let it idle for five hours and watch those temperatures. It didn't get past 100 and it was kind of warm out the other day. So this thing can get up past 150 and be just fine. Those modules are rated to go up to 300. So if that box is sitting at 100, 120, on its hottest day, 140, but that fan is moving air and it's someplace else besides the engine compartment, it should do great. So the Caddy is getting ready to go over on the lift. I gotta start thinking about running some wire. I'm gonna make a badass little bracket on my fiber laser for that little step down module. It should be kind of cool. But you know what? Before I end this video, I'm gonna pull the optical cable out of the Escalade and bring it out to the amp rack to see if those needles even get to moving. They should. This thing's basically self-contained. It just needs a signal and some positive and negative from the front, which it has right now. So while I'm showing you how rigged up my truck is, we'll just pull off some panels here and not care. We got the Nav TV GM650 all tucked away. We got a nice little remote wire right there, tucked away, ready to go. I did this install a while ago in anticipation of this build. So I've got a optical cable right here coming off of that. That thing right there is connected to the factory head unit and I'm getting as clean of a signal as you possibly can get. Flat, clean, unequalized, non bows ready to go. And uh, see this red dot? That's tunes. Here in about a minute, this thing should be down to 80, and that fan should be almost not turning at all. And it's all working as planned so far. So if for some reason this video doesn't look like a lot of progress to you, in my world it kind of is, because I have to test this stuff. I have to make sure it works. This is scary, you know what I mean? Messing up my Escalade is not something I want to do. So, so far so good, we're still surviving. The fan's down there, I heard it ramping down a little bit. And things are gonna be moving along real fast, real soon thing is that amp rack is ready to go everything is pretty much ready to go it's just testing to make sure it works and then put it in and all of a sudden it should be playing real soon before I end this video I'm gonna drop this door down turn the LEDs on this amp rack and get it all playing one last time then back to the lift it goes once I got my cables running from the front to the back then the amp rack can go in and then hopefully the box One last shot of this, if you're not familiar. The last video I showed you how I built it. This box has six XS Power 993 step down modules in it. And it's wired inside and fan cooled.
subscribe. We got the goods coming soon. I'm out. <laughs>